Welcome to Aquarium Lighting for Planet Tank Series and in this specific video we're going to go over light intensity, one of the major factors of Planet Tank Lighting. So let's get to it. So how do we measure intensity? This is one of the major factors that I talked about in the previous video over here and if you haven't seen it check it out because it kind of introduces the next three videos. So when we talk about intensity for planet lighting, we have to talk about par rating and we will get into that in a bit. But first, if you're new here and you want to learn more about aquariums or talk about aquariums, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you'll know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. So light intensity, what is that? How do we measure it? Now throughout the history of our hobby, we've always used stuff like wattage or perhaps uh, Kelvin rating and stuff. And those aren't really accurate measurements to figure out how intense light is for growing plants but first off let's get this out of the way in the last video i mentioned kelvin rating and i kind of defined it wrong kelvin rating is actually the measurement of the actual color temperatures that we see but we'll get more than that later in the later video par photosynthetic active radiation that's what it stands for that measures how much intensity and radiation is going to hit the plant leaf now there's a lot more to par because we have to look at pure as well p-u-r and that whole thing is another definition, but we will get into that in a little bit. So PAR isn't always the direct thing that we have to look at, but it's the most easiest thing that we can look at to measure the intensity of light. So there's a lot more to it, but in all intents and purposes, to make it easier for us, we're just gonna deal with PAR. So how does PAR affect plant growth? You guessed it, we're gonna look at a really cool scientific looking chart. So check it out, here it is. The chart you see here shows how PAR in different spectrum affects photosynthesis in plants. But wait a minute. Remember the first video we showed the active radiation chart and it showed this? This is where I drop a bomb of conflicting information because the information that we showed last time was based on older studies. In the newer studies, it shows that the green spectrum does in fact largely help in the production of photosynthesis based on how PAR is affecting the plant growth. In fact, 80% of the green spectrum drives photosynthesis. This is why we can't discount the use of the green spectrum. So what does that mean? Well, we can't just look at blues and reds anymore. We have to look at the whole spectrum, the full spectrum. And that's why you'll hear some of those words, full spectrums in lighting product. But we'll go over that in the next video where we talk about color spectrum. So how do we know what's low light, medium light, and high light based on the PAR ratings? Well, PAR is measured in micromoles, so you don't really need to understand, but it's measured in micromoles. But we just give a number and say PAR 20, PAR 30, PAR 50, or what have you. And in the Planet Tank Aquarium hobby, we kind of have this little guideline that we kind of all figured out and made up. But simply put, 30 micromoles of PAR is considered low lighting. Anything around the 50 micromoles of PAR is considered medium lighting, and anything over 80 micromoles is considered high lighting. Well, that's how we figure it out. We go and look at the chart and we figure it out. Well, if my carpet is getting hit with about 80 micromoles of lighting, that means it's high intensity. It's getting high intensity at that level. So that's why when people say, HC needs a lot of lighting. It'll grow best in intense lighting. That's what we mean. Get about 80 micromoles of PAR to that substrate. Now here's the kicker. You lose PAR rating the further it is from its light source. Let's take a look at this chart really quick. Now this chart is from one of the Phoenix lighting products. I believe this is the RAID 2. As you can see here, you'll see the PAR rating measured from the source and then all the way down based on the distance from the top. As you can see, you start losing par rating. Not only that, you start losing par rating when it angles off as well. So when you see a chart like that, you could actually get a really good idea of how much par you're going to give the plants. Now that's not exact. Okay, nothing's ever going to be exact because there's other things that will affect your par rating. For example, what affects par rating? The light going through water. The light going through a tank cover. The waves in the water, believe it or not, does affect par rating. And not only that, the older they get, the more power rating you lose on them. Basically, it starts running down and you start losing power on them. That's usually how it works. That's why people always talk about, well, maybe you need to replace your bulbs. Now, you might be saying, well, there's a lot of variables. We're not done yet. Check this out. You're figuring out, okay, well, more par, the better it is. Yes, no, maybe. 
Now, remember the thing I talked about companies capitalizing on a term that we use in this hobby? PAR is one of them, okay? The problem with PAR is that measuring it isn't an exact science. I don't think anything really is an exact science or a hobby, but measuring PAR is definitely one of those things. A lot of the ratings that PAR was measured in is usually, especially by the manufacturers, measured without water in the way. In other words, they're measuring an empty tank based on you know the distance from the light source itself. Keep that in mind. Also, the way that is measured, especially in a hobby, most commonly and generally done is by a PAR meter. Okay, and those PAR meters isn't exactly accurate because there's certain ways that it measures the PAR as well as how it measures the color itself. Now, the color makes a difference. The color in the spectrum makes a difference. Blue penetrates more readily in water than red does. So based on a chart like this, blues will get more PAR rating than green and green will get more PAR rating than red. Is it getting confusing yet? Just wait. The problem with this is that a PAR meter has a filter on it. So what it does is kind of balances everything and just give you one rough number. So it's just saying that this light will give PAR rating at 80 micromoles at around 12 inches, but that's just one PAR rating. It didn't tell you how much PAR you're getting it for blue, how much you're getting it for red, how much you're getting for green. Now there's a more accurate way to measure PAR rating and that's using, I believe, a spectrometer or something like that, but that gets a lot more expensive and the equipment gets kind of bigger. So it makes it a little more harder and more expensive to measure more accurate readings. Now it isn't all just about dumping light on the plant, like giving it the most intense light as possible because some plants just can't handle it. Intense lighting on a lot of plants can cause leaf burn. And of course, it starts dying back when that happens. Another thing that might happen is cause the plant to go into something called photo inhibition. That means it starts shutting down because it's just too much light. It doesn't know how to deal with it. And then it starts dying. Now, I guess the next question is, how do you get the PAR readings? Now, hopefully, if the light you got from your manufacturer is worth a spit, they will include PAR readings for you, especially on their product boxes or ratings. And that, that's when I know that if a manufacturer provides that for you, they actually spent money and backed their products. The other way is go ahead and look on the internet because there's a lot of people with a PAR meter that will post their findings on the light they're using. Now, the problem is you can't always find PAR readings for the particular light you're using, especially if that particular light is some off-brand that not everyone always uses. Another way to measure PAR, get your own PAR meter. Okay, you get a decent PAR meter from $500 or up. Okay, you could actually make a do-it-yourself PAR meter, which you can actually find on YouTube. And actually, Mike from Aquaporos actually did a video on that. So that's another way to go. And for a do-it-yourself PAR meter, we're looking about 170 bucks, something under $200. But again, a do-it-yourself PAR meter will not be always accurate, but at least you get a decent general idea. PAR does not tell the whole story. PAR is just one part of it, okay? It just tells you the intensity that your plants are getting from the light. But you cannot discount the color spectrum that's being used, and you cannot discount the coverage that's happening in your tank. Just like balancing a planted tank so you don't get any algae and get healthy plant growth, you got to balance the lighting. And in the next video, we're going to go over the color spectrum and how it affects plant growth. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. And hit that like, comment, and share where you can. I love you guys. And remember, stay wet with your tanks. Have fun out there.